In this section of the handling training, we'll look at setting up and engaging with collection materials in group settings like tours and classes. If possible, look over items you'll be showing ahead of time in case you come across any handling issues. You can also mark pages you want to show with strips of non-acidic paper for easier access. It can be tempting to hold up items for a larger audience, but we always recommend keeping items on the work surface. When you're holding something up and outwards to show other people, it's harder for you to see what you're doing with the item. It can be easy to get caught up in talking about and displaying the item rather than focusing on the safety of the item. Keeping the item on the work surface reduces the number of handling risks to keep track of. You may want to provide time during or after your session so your audience can come up close to items individually or in smaller groups. Consider how many items you want to show and whether you will be setting up only for display or if you will be handling items with your audience during the session. The more items and the larger they are, the more space you will need for handling, which is good to keep in mind when selecting materials. Here you can see a display setup that's looking pretty crowded. It's much easier for an audience to focus when there's less clutter. Special Collections suggests requesting no more than 25 items at once for class use. Materials should be set up so that they're not too close to the edge of the table, and so you never have to lean or reach over something else to access an item. If the audience can walk around both sides of the table, you can have two rows of material with items facing the side of the table closest to the audience. Otherwise, it's best to keep items on the table in a single row. Items need to be properly supported. Here you can see the leaves of this book have been left sticking up. Snake weights should have been used to keep the leaves down. Supports need to be larger than the item to provide adequate support. If they're too small, they can sometimes even cause further damage. Put flat items without protective sleeves on support boards. If you're passing items around to an audience or moving it around a lot, it's also safer to move the support than the item it is on. Placing an item on a support board also draws attention to it as a collection material, encouraging more careful handling. During the session, it's good for the presenter and audience to observe if the setup is working. For instance, if the audience will be walking around or turning leaves in a large book close to another item, the motion can generate a breeze that moves a nearby item. We're constantly trying to balance preservation with accessibility. At the end of the day, we want to encourage everyone to work with our collections. If you are presenting with materials that are fragile or have handling complications, it's best to indicate this to the audience and limit handling. Tell them to ask for coaching on proper handling if they're interested in handling these materials. Best practices do take extra time and effort. It's important to explain why the physical object is worth preserving through careful handling. Loss and damage can affect the way we interpret an item. We do a lot of great work in conservation, but treatment does change an object, so preventive care is always better than interventive care. Just because something has been treated doesn't mean it's not fragile anymore either. Practicing and promoting good handling to your audience is one of the best ways of safeguarding collection materials for future generations. Even if you're familiar with the items you're handling, wear from handling is cumulative and materials can fail us in unexpected ways. So it's always good to take a moment and assess potential handling risks. When you're presenting to an audience, you're also setting precedents for them to follow when they next approach collection materials. So one moment of good handling practice can ensure many more. If you or your audience want to learn more about conservation services, we have a spotlight exhibit to showcase our work online. We also have an Instagram account to highlight our activities and hope to be able to offer more open houses and lab tours in the future.